Hello, we are back. We are doing some more Civilization VI tonight. If you caught the last video, we are uh, in a little bit of hot water. It's not looking too good. Uh, but I think we're going to come out just fine. Uh, you see, I am playing Persia, the new leader, Nader Shah, and had a very successful early game war. It really went great. We rushed Immortals, just dominated the opponents. But, but, um, the nearby civs to us, given that we're on a high difficulty, I didn't really get to attack them very much, and they pretty much, a couple of them struck way out ahead. Um, so uh, Canada, especially, is right next to me, um, is rather threatening at this time. Uh, has declared war on me for conquering, um, I think it was Norway, conquered the entirety of Norway, and as soon as Grand Congress hit, or World Congress hit, um, Canada's declared war on me. Um, you'll see we're also at war uh, with uh, Coupe, but um, he's not really a threat. He's pretty far away. I don't really think we're going to be seeing much of Coupe. If we do, we might be doomed um, because he also has a big army, but he's quite far, so I think we're all right on that front. Um, realistically speaking, given that there's a military emergency, we're not going to be trying to attack. Um, we're probably going to be trying to play more of a defensive game. Um, Canada also has a bigger army. Um, fortunately, we're pretty close together in terms of tech, but um, they do have a larger army than I do, so uh, we'll have to be careful about that, and hopefully they aren't able to just beat us down with their sheer technological advantage. I'm sure that they're going to get to um, bombards and stuff eventually before we do, so we've got to make sure to... Uh, make sure to deal with that. Oh, you know, I forgot to put up my space divider. I just want to close off the area in case my partner comes out to the bathroom or something. Let's do this then. We are loaded in. You can see we are at war with two people. There are some more uh, more people on this map. This is a large map, but uh, we have not encountered everybody yet. So let's see what happens. Um, you can see I've been making some plans here with these tacks. We're also playing with a few mods. You'll note that these uh, preserves here with the uh, campuses here are giving it an unusual amount of science because they uh, preserves now give a plus two to campuses, and they're also more science-based buildings rather than being based around culture and other, other yields. So these are primarily going to give us science rather than anything. Um, that's a wonderful mod. I have a bunch of other mods uh, installed as well that we can talk about as they come up. Uh, if you're not familiar, there are, of course, these TAC mods as well that show you um, very detailed information about how good your districts will be if placed in certain locations. That's what I've got going on here, um, and those are just wonderful. So. I would definitely recommend, um, you can see I can show and hide them, uh, <clears throat> I would definitely recommend picking up that mod uh, if you're interested in UI mods. That one's probably one of my favorites out of all of the mods that I have used so far. So we're going to go ahead and start upgrading, we're gonna, or rather keep upgrading these immortals that we used for the war against Norway into Man at Arms to help defend against Canada here. You can see they're invading from the northeast. We want to make sure to block that off. We're going to get some walls up. We just got walls up here. We're going to be getting this barracks going in Kumasi. And this is actually going to be crucial. Because as soon as this comes up, um, we can just park a unit here and um, take down this encampment. You'll notice that Canada is notably lacking walls. Um, so this does make them rather vulnerable, but I'm not sure, given their larger army size, that I'm actually going to have a chance to take their cities before they get walls. So we'll see if I have the opportunity to go on the offensive this time. Uh, something tells me that we are not going to be playing a particularly offense-heavy game, um, at least for now. So I'm noticing that I've got a couple districts left to place. This is part of um, the, I believe that's community quick user interface, CQUI, that adds that um, really nice update. Just tells you when your population has risen to a point where you could put some districts down. So let's go ahead and decide where to put these. Now, if you're not aware, uh, districts, when you place them, that is, uh, you can see, it's they start building, they take up this tile here um, so that you can't get any yields from it. Um, as long as that has happened, 
even if you're not currently building it, the production cost of that building is locked, which is really, really preferable because every time you research a technology or a civic, uh, your districts all go up in price. So locking those districts in, even if you don't plan to build them right away, really can save you a dramatic amount of time later in the game. So we want to see, we want to go ahead and lock these in. Um, note that this uh, applies to not just um, specialty districts, but also other districts like aqueducts increase over the course of the game and cost. Uh, so it's very important to get those down. Let's see, now here um, I'm noticing we can put, we've got this going on. Um, so we've got both of our culture buildings. We don't have a culture building here. This is Sketsmo. Oh, um, well, that seems kind of like a no-brainer then. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hmm. So let's see if we could maybe retool this a little bit. We've got that. I could tear up this rice, and that might actually be worth it, because in this way, we lose a little bit of food on Nidoros, but I think I can um, add that in over here with a farm triangle. So we're gonna lose some food on Nidoros on that tile, but we're going to generate lots of culture because not only uh, are we going to move this rice, we're gonna change this to an entertainment complex. And you see, now we're up to plus eight and plus six here. That is really, really worth it. Um, I thought this belonged to Nidoros, but apparently it belongs to Sketsmo. So this is much improved to what we had originally planned. And as for the new placement of the uh, commercial hub, I think this place seems like the best option. We've got a harbor there already. We, and in fact, I think it's better than what we were originally planning. So that's an improvement for sure. Um, now that said, uh, I want to go ahead and tear this spot up. And we are gonna wait until next turn to drop this down so that we can harvest this food. That is gonna be really good to propel, uh, let's go ahead and put that on Elsund. And if you're not aware as well, um, when you do chops, it's important to consider which city is in control of the uh, tile that you are chopping at any time. Um, <clears throat> this can, <laughs> I've had a few times where I've chopped something and it's gone to the wrong city and uh, caused me some big problems, especially trying to chop out wonders. Um, always better just to take the time to consider uh, if you are putting that in the right location. So uh, with this city here, we could go for a harbor, which is probably a good option. We do have some good choices here. We could go for um, this spot on top of the squid or this spot on top of the whales. Um, both are tough choices uh, because even both of them are very good. I guess the squid is a bonus resource rather than uh, the luxury resource of the whales, so it would be good to choose that. Um, let's see, and I believe if you're wondering why I can place this on top of whales, that is because of, I think, Sucretax Oceans mod. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's the same thing that is adding in uh, these kelp forests here that add a little bit of uh, food to your tile. Um, additionally, the reason these tiles are also good, you'll notice they're one gold, one food, is because of the better lakes and uh, uh, coastal cities mod. Um, this is another thing that I recommend you add in. It, it buffs not just you and your play, but also uh, the opponents. And I like to leave this in um, even if I'm not planning on building a coastal empire. You can see I've built a primarily inland empire. Um, so this is actually benefiting probably Portugal more than it is me and as well um, Coupe too. So. Uh, it makes the game a little bit more interesting. I think coastal cities are pretty weak, aside from their ability to produce navy, which is pretty weak. So um, good to buff that up a bit. Now, however, though, I don't think I really want to go straight towards that. Um, I don't think I want to go towards that harbor yet. Uh, I can, I've got a harbor up here where I can produce some military units from if I need to. I've already got a staple in this city. I think it would be better to perhaps go towards culture. Um, if we had anywhere that was halfway decent, we could drop a preserve down. But I did some looking towards the end of our last episode and couldn't find anything good. Um, now, another thing to note here is our lack of positive amenities. 
um, overall, we could try to go for entertainment complexes. Um, but given that we're pretty far behind on culture, I think I want to go ahead and go for theater squares first. Um, let's see. So we're going to put a theater square down in Nidoros next. Skedsmo can also drop a district. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, we could, I don't think there's anywhere decent for a preserve here. Um, and we could go for like an aqueduct industrial zone kind of thing. That is an option. Um, likewise, we could drop down um, something like this and put in an entertainment complex here. This might not be a bad idea either, giving ourselves a little bit extra culture there. Um, <coughs> that could be good and deal with our amenities. Additionally, putting a, uh, a, an encampment here is another big thing to consider. In addition to that um, entertainment complex, a campus could be, or sorry, an encampment could be a really big deal for the city, um, giving us another layer of defense here, protecting all of these area, this area in the middle, or maybe all of this area down here, uh, could be really, really powerful in a strategic sense. Um, speaking of, we've got uh, Mitla as well that can build a district. So perhaps Mitla could plop down an encampment somewhere useful. Um, now, it is always tempting to put encampments within two ranges of cities, but you can see we're probably going to get Victoria for free anyway. So don't really want to worry about that so much. Um, we could go in this direction with an encampment uh, down towards this tile here. Um, now, notably, I think I just noticed, oh well, we have already got that. Um, any encampment in this area would be really defensible. But likewise, I think this would also be a very good spot for an encampment. Um, this way we have sort of a big front of all of the planes here that would normally be pretty easy to run through, uh, thus forcing them to go either through these hills, slowing down, uh, or through our encampments taking damage. So I think this is probably the best spot, and we can go for that encampment just as soon as those walls finish up. In this spot, I think we probably also want to go for an encampment, but we should think carefully about where we put this. Uh, we've got this here, and it's project protecting all the way out to this marble in a big ring, two tiles outwards. Um, so we don't need too much overlap here. And likewise, we've got this protecting out to that marble as well. So there's already a little bit of overlap, though that is deliberate. Um, but specifically, this area between our three cities um, seems largely undefended. Um, so it's always good, if you can, uh, to place encampments along rivers, um, especially rivers that have already been dammed up. And you can see we're planning on dropping a dam. Is it, is it here? Where is the Numadal uh, Riverhead? Oh yes, we're planning on dropping a dam here in Skedsmo as soon as we unlock that. So this would eventually be dammed off, and that could effectively provide protection for this entire region in between our three cities as well. Um, <coughs> so I think that we'll do that. We'll buy this tile and put the encampment right there. Uh, this is a that's a tough choice instead of getting uh, another Mana Arms, but I think we've got several already. And saving that production time on that encampment and getting it in the perfect spot is just a little bit more important, I think, than a lot of the other things. And likewise, I want to go ahead and plan um, to perhaps knock out this forest so that we can put an entertainment complex here, but still have this farm triangle, because I would like to still have a farm triangle going in the late game. So I think keeping this area farming, you'll notice we can't get a farm triangle here um, anymore. And there are some other places we could try to cram one in, but uh, overall it's going to prove a challenge. We've got this campus over here, so we don't want to take these rainforests out, for example. Um, we could try to find one here. I think this could be another farm triangle. Let's go ahead and mark that down. That that is probably worth putting in. Now these farm triangles, they're really important once you get to feudalism, which I am unlocking soon. You can see that farm improvements gain extra food for adjacent farms. So this is something you absolutely want to leverage anytime you have enough space. These big, wide, open cities with lots of space build these triangular farms or diamond-shaped farms. 
um, and you can get some absolutely insane bonuses to your food production that way. Um, let's see. Do we have any other districts to consider? Oh, uh, it looks as though Stavanger here um, can fit another district. How odd that it's not letting me place it. This icon, I think, should go away. One, two, three. Yes. How strange. Um, ah, so this would be uh, Christensen. This was originally uh, a forward settle from the now conquered Nordic Empire. Um, <clears throat> I'm tempted to go towards an industrial zone. We don't have one of these yet. It would be really good to go ahead and start getting some great uh, engineer points, and this will eventually be a very, very good tile here. You can see it's also not on floodplains, which is appealing. Uh, likewise, I could go, uh, let's see, in a few directions here. We've got this commercial hub there. Um, why do I have two commercial hubs planned for this city? That's right. Uh, I think industrial zone. industrial zone. I could go, if I had more money, I could go towards an entertainment complex. But since we do not, let's go ahead and pin down this industrial zone. Get that cost locked in. Oh, okay, well, we have more money. Um, so in that case, or we have a, not more money, uh, another district delay. So in that case, um, we probably will go for this entertainment complex next. Uh, I think that would be very important. Uh, one, two, three. So this has to be one, two, three. So it needs to be like this. This needs to be Christensen. Uh, okay, so we have to make sure. Oops, that should be. Okay. Have to make sure that we build these in the right cities. Uh, cities can only place districts up to three tiles away. So uh, if we place Christensen's district, or uh, culture district here, we won't be able to place our theater square for our capital in the other spot. Uh, whereas Christensen can place this theater square down. Uh, so we want to make sure to carefully consider what goes where. Uh, let's see, likewise, uh, it probably would be a good idea to go ahead and lock in this entertainment complex's cost. Uh, we're not gonna build it right now. Um, and then additionally, I guess while we're at it, Maybe we go ahead and lock in an industrial zone too. Um, could be a good call. Hmm, this is a tough choice. I was thinking of doing this. It looks as though I hadn't decided whether I wanted to put it up here or not. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, that's what we can do. We can make this actually uh, from a cod. And this one, Chris Jensen. And then we will be able to Let's see, one, two, three. Oh, no. Oh, I made a misplay. Oh, that's very sad. Okay, well, uh, so here you're going to get another one of my opinions. I don't actually think that reloading turns is a big deal. Um, I like to keep 10 auto saves. I don't like to go further back than that. Um, I feel like it gets a little bit save scummy if you're going too far. It's also a little boring. But I don't usually reload, but um, especially if I just make a mistake like that. I really don't think that there is anything to be ashamed of there. I think that's a hard thing to argue. Um, honestly, what I should have done is when I placed those tacks down, I should have named them already. Um, that way, you can avoid that kind of mistake. So in the future, uh, yes, we can perhaps make this a teachable moment. Um, label those tacks. When you've got a bunch of the same tack close together, um, It's especially if you're going very wide, cramming in as many cities as you can, make sure you know which tack needs to be built by which city. <clears throat> easy to make that mistake. Well, I guess while we're waiting on loading, I'll go ahead and uh, have a uh, little bit of puff of this D8. We'll get back to it. Anyway.
There we go. Bueno. Right. Uh, that's what we did. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. We are back. And I have corrected the mistakes that we have made. Thought I always made it there. But uh, I got treated to some bubbling. I guess I could have talked. Start, kept talking. Um, just don't like to... Uh, you know, show off certain things that my stream is not really about. But, you know, certain things are allowed, even if I don't want to show them off. Let's see, so then, we're moving these man-at-arms up. We're going to be moving our military towards the front line here. <clears throat> Generally speaking, we don't want to try to aggress here. There aren't walls, but there still isn't very much reason to push in at this time. Um, just seems like a surefire way to get smacked. Um, also, we do have these immortals, and while they don't do much, um, they are kind of interesting uh, when they are in defense. Likewise, we have some pretty incredible units. We've got some level 4 guys 
those are really going to make a big difference. So I think what I need to do is move this immortal over here, try to start threatening out this guy, um, and go ahead and swap this guy here. We'll go there and upgrade him. <clears throat> that way this city has much stronger walls. Because this man at arms is quite potent. All of their man at arms really are a big threat to us. We are a little bit under teched at this time, just barely getting to man at arms. <clears throat> I think a turn or two after they declared war. I don't recall exactly. So it is very, very good that we got to them in time at all. I did anticipate the war coming a little bit, but I didn't realize it would come quite so fast. So uh, I had my armies positioned towards the south to attack the city-state, which is why we're all re frantically repositioning at this point, trying to get close enough to uh, that area up there to defend. <clears throat> Let's see, now Akkad, I forget what I did here. I seem to recall not doing anything with this city. Um, let's see, so let's, we got that in that there. Um, do I need to buy anything else? I don't want to do things differently than how I did. So I hope I haven't forgotten anything. But I feel like I had way less money. Um, so it's tough to say. I think we drop this industrial zone then. Look at industrial zone here. This will be really important to power a large area eventually. Uh, although, as you can see, it will be quite some time. Go ahead and upgrade this guy, level 4. Worth upgrading for sure. Probably that one next, well, not next turn, but in a few turns, we'll upgrade that too. Just go right on over this way. Again, moving everything, just going north. We're just trying to get there. Let's give this guy some extra movement. And go into safe territory here. Finally, our scout is no longer in immediate danger, which is very good. I was worried they were exploring Canada and almost died. <laughs> Uh, well, they were fortunately only just over here. You can see there's another scout that managed to escape as well. And this one here. It's a good thing I scouted out Canada before this all started. <clears throat> this could have been a lot worse if I didn't realize how futile invading their territory is. Um, if you're not aware, this is almost entirely hills, so it would be quite difficult to actually navigate. Um, that's fine. I was hoping that this the that guy would take the scout as bait. Um, so that is very good. You can see these men-at-arms are just marching in. Like, I don't even have a military here. That's why we need to set up this battlefront. Um, well, he doesn't like me. I did conquer an entire nation and several city-states, so I, I do deserve this, but these, these warmonger penalties will wear off eventually. Um, and ultimately, if I can successfully defend... Uh, this city, Christiansen, and I actually get quite a lot. I get plus uh, combat strength and diplomatic favor, which for me is basically just a large amount of money. Um, so I need to t prevent them from retaking this city, which doesn't really seem like it will actually be that difficult. Um, although I am noting I forgot to drop down this industrial zone. Go ahead and get that before the cost goes up. thought I was forgetting something. <coughs> Um, now, with Mashad, we're going to put this in the correct location this time. We're going to not make that mistake that we did last time. And we're going to put this here with Akkad. There we go. So now, Akkad will eventually be able to build that. Um, that will be very good. We'll go ahead and label this too. Oh yeah, we had, what was this? This was redundant. Okay. Let's 
go here, we'll put a farm here. We can probably get another tr farm triangle eventually. We go over here. <laughs> Again, we're just going to try to move everything towards the right location. None of it is in the right location. All of our armies are late. They were on the other side of the continent. Um, let's see. We can put in some damage here. And some of those. Oops. And we're just going to take these guys and fortify. Uh, that seems like the optimal move here. Now we still can't really fight uh, outright, but what we can do is use the rivers to our advantage. <coughs> and use these ranged attacks. We do at least still have our ranged mortals, so that does make a big difference. Uh, and you may notice here, I'm really not putting too much emphasis on building military. Uh, so this could be a huge mistake, but I don't really feel like I can afford to build up a giant army at this point. Um, I have to make what I have work. Uh, at this stage in the game, if I don't start getting caught up in terms of uh, tech the, and culture, as you can see I'm lagging way behind um, in science and uh, barely hanging in there on culture, uh, then I am going to get just too, too far behind. Um, whoops, that's, didn't mean to open that up. Um, we're going to run from coupes, horsemen. Oh, nice. Found a natural wonder. This is a pretty one. Beautiful under. All right, so our scout is hopefully safely away, and we're just going to keep exploring around there. Uh, and this vampire can't do much right now. Uh, they don't have very many kills, but we're going to try to change that as the game goes on. Let's see, Let's drop another ranged attack here. These immortals are amazing for that reason. Even though they're kind of obsolete as melee units, they can still get that little bit of poke in. That is just oh so valuable. <laughs> okay, well that's not good. That scout may die. That's okay. Well, let's clear these tiles and get some money coming the way. <coughs> I think that will be very important to get that money. Let's see. Um, right. Christensen needed another district job. So let's do. lock in the cost of this entertainment complex, like we were think thinking before. <clears throat> yes, very good. I've got to keep those uh, amenities managed, especially as long as I've been at, as I'm about to be at war, I think. We're going to need some amenities. Okay, well, you know, I'm starting to think maybe I need to go ahead and just sell off these for now and see if we can get some money. So that's really not worth it. Uh, let's see if someone just wants to buy grapes. Um, I guess we'll take whatever money we can get. Pericles is kind of broke. Uh, does anybody want to buy horses, perhaps? Let's put a 20 up for sale. Nobody wants to buy horses, okay. What about iron? Nobody wants to buy iron. All right, well, 
We can't really increase our income directly then. Uh, we have no Diplo favor. It is monumentality though, so what we can do is keep popping out builders with faith. Uh, we have a little bit of faith production, not very much. This, uh, this holy site will eventually be most of our faith, but I didn't get to build it because we got attacked. Uh, so eventually uh, we will get that holy site up, but unfortunately our monumentality is going to be a little bit uh, diminished because of that. Uh, also, I really need to get scouts out and exploring to get uh, Euroscore. So I don't have nearly enough exploration happening. That's what I was trying to do. Oh my. Oh, wow. He almost died. So that's scary. Uh, my vampire got beaten up. And the man-at-arms did too. But they're taking a little bit of damage here. So the <clears throat> struggle in this situation is that they have um, farms that they can pillage. If I give up these tiles, and I don't have enough money, I don't have enough money really to um, get another... So they definitely can do enough damage here to take me out. So I'm going to have to step back with this unit. Well, I hate that it does that sometimes. Uh, and move this, <coughs> let's move this builder down uh, to this direction. We'll send this builder down over here. And buy another one. Hopefully we can make those builders do something for us. We've already gotten a couple with our monumentality so far. <clears throat> Let's see. So at this point, um, I could... Well, I can't build the encampment. Um, and it looks as though they're going to try to knock down the walls of the city here. So we're going to give some support bonus there. I think, yeah, that's a victory. We can give support bonus there. We'll put a support bonus there. So that all really adds up to make my defensive line a lot stronger. <clears throat> it's a big part of why um, that this man at arms almost died uh, is because we didn't have the support bonuses there for him. So one of our vampires is taken out. That's fine. That's the new one that has basically no bonuses. Um, <clears throat> so we're not too stressed about that. I think what I need to be doing in this city, uh, it's tough to say because there isn't much to be done, but we probably should be f switching between the holy site and the encampment. Uh, it occurs to me now that encampment is probably uh, obviously not going to finish because the units will just stand on top of it. Um, so that's unfortunate. Um, do we upgrade this man-at-arms? I feel like we do. I think if I don't upgrade this unit, it dies. Um, and... Let's see, so this unit... It's gonna make it hard to attack into us. Um, but the problem is, I really need to get to this catapult. I can't let this catapult set up. So I think I need to go there. And then fortify. I think I think that give, get that one turn of fortification. Uh, hopefully it does make a difference. Um, oh, no. Uh, this is not correct. I don't want to be building this here right now. Um, that's a big mistake. I really need to be getting military units out. Um, let's see. Go ahead and pin down this though while we're here get that cost locked in nice and low finish up an archer i guess and then go into more of these man-at-arms we just need to get a bunch of those um, 
It's unfortunate that we don't have more barracks. I did all of this conquering and then pretty much this war started very shortly after, so I didn't have much time to actually establish any infrastructure. <clears throat> Ideally, I can survive the, third, the 24 turns and he'll want to leave me alone after that. Um, you can see he's already lost tons of military strength. He's lost over 300 to our just losing about uh, 40. So things are going very poorly for Canada, but um, they may still go poorly for us, especially Kumasi. Um, those catapults might make it there, and that would really not be good. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and promote this scout. Uh, give it a little bit ranger. There's not really much point in trying to actually level up the scout at this time. We can just retreat into uh, Greek territory. <clears throat> find some safety there. Let's set this guy to automate. Um, and we'll set this guy to automate. Let's see. And now hopefully we're not making a huge mistake by focusing on infrastructure. If we can get away with all of this infrastructure in the middle of this war, that is, if I can leverage this military well enough to survive long enough for our infrastructure to come up so we can switch into units, um, I think were golden for a long, a large portion of the game. Uh, but if we cannot get this infrastructure up, if we lose, start losing cities um, <clears throat> and have to skip over some of this infrastructure stuff, it's going to be really, really nasty. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's turn off all of these yields and tax to get a little cluttered visually um, while we focus on the combat that is before us. Um, you can see I'm already starting to get this, this defensive line set up, and that's fantastic. We've forced this catapult to move downwards away from Kumasi. I was really worried there that that was going to go even worse. Um, and you can see here our um, man-at-arms is in danger. So what I can do is step forward here with this man-at-arms and do a city attack to kill this one off. So I think... At that point, we'll have support bonus, and uh, there won't be quite enough threat to take this man at arms out, especially with that healing coming through from fortifying last turn. Um, let's see. This immortal just barely survived. Fortunately, we do have. Um, uh, he wasn't even standing in a district. That's probably my mistake. But uh, wow, barely alive. Let's retreat back and get some healing going with that unit. Um, we can go ahead and strike, or we could move. Let's get our back line moved forwards a little bit, and then we'll consider um, what to do next. So these spearmen, they're not even worth bringing to the front. Um, they're too weak. They will just die. I guess they could soak up an attack, but it would honestly be better uh, not to. Let's see. Uh, for this builder, I need to see what's going where. Um, is there anything that needs clearing? Okay, I'm not seeing anything in particular. Do we have construction yet? I think we do. Yeah, we can get machinery. Um, so then... Wait, do we Yeah. Okay, so we could put a lumber mill in. I think that would be good. A little bit of extra production here. Um, let's put this on production focus as well. Make sure we're getting all of that. I can't get lumber mills here until mercantilism. So we're going to have to figure something else out. For production there. I don't think it's worth chopping in that city. <coughs> There's a lot of turns left. We're going to get a lot of value out of those tile yields. And these military units. Ideally, their value will be short-lived. Um, we don't want... Ooh, that's fantastic. We really don't want these um, units to have to keep fighting. Um, I would much rather switch to a more uh, defensive posture at some point where we aren't con caught in a constant quagmire. That said, I do plan to do quite a bit more war. We just really need to stabilize at, at a certain point. Let's do 
forgot. I forget what this. Uh, how do you even spell it? Pairi days. Daisa, perhaps? I don't know. So it's base plus one culture plus two gold. That's actually excellent. <clears throat> ah, it wants to be next to holy sites and theater squares, or commercial hubs and city centers. that would have me wanting to put it, say, over here or maybe there. Stuff to find a good spot. Um, this just seems kind of random. Just seems like a random spot. Let's, let's go for the cattle. Do a tile improvement. That really matters. Let's see them. So um, note that this uh, immortal with level four could double attack that catapult now. It is basically a non-factor. It's really good. Um, I'm thinking, actually... Yeah, let's take this out. I think that's the way to go. We can step forward here. Um, I am tempted to attack this archer, but I think it would put me too far forward with this unit. Um, in range, I don't know what's back here. See, so I'm not sure... If there are a bunch of units in Toronto that can funnel through and hit this spot, I can imagine taking a ranged attack plus two, three melee um, could spell doom for this unit. So instead, I think what we'll do is fortify. Um, as tempting as that archer is, fortifying, I believe, is the right call here. And we're going to take a single step with this immortal and finish off one of these catapults. Taking out the catapults is actually vastly more important than taking out the man-at-arms uh, at, at this time. Uh, the man-at-arms can't actually do much without some sort of siege weapon. Um, you know, for example, uh, battering rams or their upgraded versions. I think I have one of those around here somewhere, headed to the north. Um, although I can't seem to find it. There it is. Yes, a battering ram or its upgrade, um, any of these upgrades to the battering ram. Very important. Um, for enabling melee and anti-cavalry, but I don't see any of these. Um, he looks like his, uh, Canada here is planning on leveraging these catapults, and that, I think, is a big mistake. Catapults are really tough to get into position. So hopefully this uh, super backfires in a big way. You can see we're getting a little bit of a victory here um, for this unit. I think what might be a better decision is to back off of this spot across the river to get more defensive bonuses against these guys. And now we have a little bit of a flanking bonus. Here you can see um, we are getting plus two from two of us being next to this guy. So um, we're getting some support and flanking and bonuses from Oligarchy. That's why it's 58 to 55, even on Immortal difficulty. You can see they get plus three just for the difficulty. So let's attack this guy. It looks like we might even get a free settler here which would be very good. Now, notably, I'm not going to attack with this one because uh, they could potentially take quite a lot of damage. Um, and likewise, I'm not going to attack here because there could they could potentially take quite a lot of damage. What I'm actually going to do is move to this location, thus forcing them to either step across the river to attack me, thus wa wasting a lot of their time and movement for the turn, um, or attack across the river, which is really bad. Um, <coughs> so... Let's see. We might even, if we're really lucky, be able to get this vampire in here uh, to be able to get some bonuses. Uh, we're going to leave this... Oh, uh, sorry. That's the wrong unit. We're going to move this builder away. Uh, I'm going to set them down here. I could move them under that immortal, but I think that it's a safer move to put them to the south. So here, once again, we're just going to fortify. They have too many bonuses. Um, here for uh, their great general and that terrain that they're on, 48 to 65 isn't even close. Uh, so we're not going to attack there. And we're just going to keep moving away from Canada before we put this uh, scout on auto. There are still a couple tiles that we don't have for Canada, so we want to make sure that the scouts aren't attracted to them. Would much rather have them. Okay, that is. And also, we have found uh, 
we have found the Maori, and I thought they were up here, but apparently they are also down here. So that is noteworthy. <coughs> So this war is actually, it's going pretty well, honestly. This is going really, really well, maybe even better than I expected, uh, except that I have just realized I've lost a battering ram for free. Uh, I put it to move there a long time ago and uh, forgot that it existed. So that's unfortunate. I was just looking for battering rams too. Um, oh well, they aren't very expensive, so not the end of the world here. Um, but that is our first casualty then. First casualty for the war is... Uh, that battering ram crew, uh, unfortunately, they are lost to us. For shame, for shame. We'll have a, have a puff in honor. Alas. Poor battering ram crew. I knew them. Well, tough to say who to hit with this. I think the archer. The archer hasn't taken any damage, <clears throat> and it's just plinking away. Uh, that does mean that, once again, it's now guaranteed that we cannot safely attack into this spot. Um, but that's fine. It was never a safe attack into that spot, so we're just going to fortify. We do not want to aggress into their territory. That's never been the plan. Um, and I'm going to... Shoot an attack there, and an attack... Since he can't just one round it, we are going to shoot an attack there as well. Get a little bit of damage off, and then now we're going to use this man-at-arms. Uh, put them up front, since they're not leveled up, um, we are happy with them taking a, the brunt of the damage. And then now we have this movement available. Uh, now this is a really high level uh, immortal, so they're very fragile. Um, you should essentially treat them like an archer at this stage of the game. Uh, you really don't want to be going into melee unless you uh, feel like you have to. Uh, the archer mode is much safer, and also they're so frail. Um, you can see one combat, even with this damage unit, takes out about half of our immortal's health. Um, so we need to make sure to keep them out of harm's way. So be very careful how you position them. Fortunately, these rivers we've really been able to leverage quite well. Um, so. They haven't been able to do a terrible amount of damage to us. I'm going to move on to this spot. Again, we're just going to try to stay on the other side of the rivers with anything we don't want to die. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, it looks like we are actually going to get a free settler here. I don't really know what was going on with that. It's very strange to me. Um, let's see, we've got 48. That's on. 54. Wait. Which one is me? We're both oligarchy. Okay, so yeah, they're the weaker one. Interesting that this, uh... Let's have a different bonus. Seven warfare. Oh, yes! This is a battle cry men at arms. Wow, okay. So this one I built a little differently than the others. And they are, in fact, built different. Free settler. Nice. Um, so most of them are built tortoise. They're built for defense and urban warfare um, to eventually try to ingress into Canada. <clears throat> but I do like to have a couple of these guys lying around for that exact reason. Uh, I guess I lost track of which one was which. So that's good. I thought I had sent that unit over to the other front. So we're going to send this guy here. up north. And with this builder, I think this builder should uh, put in some of these tile improvements up here. So um, <clears throat> At this point, it's probably overkill, but we're going to move all the way back here. Just try to make sure that that unit gets to heal up safely without getting attacked. <clears throat> so uh, once again, we can move forward here. We can move forward to threaten um, and in fact, Canada's army is looking pretty weak, so I'm going to do just that, and hopefully they both attack this unit. Um, it shouldn't die, even if the archer gets involved, even if they finish walls this round, I think. 
this unit would still live. So uh, that is a safe move. Hopefully I'm not wrong. <laughs> I have been wrong before, and I, I will be wrong again, I'm sure. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put a mine here. That's a good spot for a mine. We're not going to see uh, any district go there either. I had planned to put a, camp, a uh, commercial hub there, but it seems that I put the commercial hub there instead. Um, I'm not really sure why. Uh, but it's fine either way. They get the same bonus, so perhaps there was some reason that I have since forgotten. Let's see. Uh, so we're just going to run away from Kaya Poi. I do not want to fight that. Oh, there's another unit. Right. So things are actually going very smoothly. We have uh, beaten back the Canadian forces for the most part. Um, notably, we're in a golden age and they're in a dark age at this time. And they have no walls. They're just, they've gotten their first set of walls up here. Uh, it is actually possible that we'll be able to push in. Um, let me see. What is the upgrade to our siege tech? That's machinery next, right? So let's do machinery after this to get these siege towers going. And I think we may just be able to leverage these siege towers to a victory over Canada. Um, that would be just wonderful. Um, and in fact, when are we getting a six slot government? Um, we could go for monarchy. It's not too far away. I would rather go for probably Merchant Republic, though Monarchy is pretty good and Theocracy is even better for me. Hmm. Um, well, maybe we stick with the Monarchy. Yeah, you know, let's go for Monarchy. Uh, that will be good. We'll finish up Feudalism and we'll pick up Civil Service and then Monarchy next. We might even be able to get an alliance with Greece. Um, and I think that could be really quite powerful if I wanted to, say, turn on the Babylonians next. Um, they have a lot of science, or sorry, the Byzantine Empire. They have a lot of science, and uh, I feel like taking that over would probably be pretty good for me. Um, so it seems as though they're at war with the Greeks, and maybe losing? Losing war versus the Greeks. Very interesting. So. Uh, Perhaps the Greeks will ally with me against uh, the Maori eventually, or the Byzantines. Interesting, interesting. So definitely some developments happening in this game so far. Uh, hopefully I can discover another continent here soon. And also, I found Portugal. Um, neat. There's Portugal. No bells? No bells! All right, no casualties this year. Whew, this has been quite a battle so far, but we have absolutely been devastating the Canadian forces, totally dominating this war of attrition against this immortal Canadian AI. Uh, you know, it occurs to me, I'm really sorry, I forgot to put up my stream manager. So if you have been chatting, I've totally missed that. Go ahead and pull that up. There we go. Manager. All right. Well, it is quiet as expected. That's fine. Um, you know, I have definitely heard about how many zero viewer streams you gotta get through before anyone starts paying attention. So let's see. I'm really just here. Honestly, in the long run, I'm just here because I need to start making an online persona. I wanna get out there and have my music be liked and well, I want people to know who I am. I think if they know me, they'll like my music a little more. Maybe. Maybe even be willing to listen to it and tell me why they think it's bad. Um, either way, it'll be good. Um, and frankly, I just, I enjoy playing games, you know? I, if people want to watch me play games, that's great, you know? I think that is just wonderful. So, I don't think we can slot this. I don't think we can slot this. It's not gonna work. We need every, uh, we need this campus adjacency bonus in a big way. Uh, so we're gonna hold off on that, I'll hold off on that. It's also going to be a long time until we get um, that six-slot government. But we're winning. I don't think we need to go for castles anymore. 
let's go straight to machinery and get these siege towers a little bit faster. Um, we can even follow this up with stirrups uh, to get uh, a, a few knights coming out. Um, and even just a couple knights running over, pillaging stuff, causing problems, um, especially if you can pick up barding on them, it is just amazing. So I think that could be really good for harassing and just causing lots of problems for Canada. It might even be necessary uh, because I anticipate we should start seeing some Canadian knights at some point. Um, in fact, come to think of it, maybe instead of stirrups, we go for military tactics and then stirrups. Um, that way, when these Canadian knights start coming, we are ready for them. Okay. Um, whoops. So let's think carefully here. It's always good to try to move your furthest back units first and get your most restricted attacks off. But this archer isn't doing anything until we get machinery, so we're going to ignore that. Um, <clears throat> we could move this unit up into this position here, where our um, new man-at-arms was standing. Um, and I noticed that he has an upgrade available. So let's go. Let's stand right there, and we'll just use this upgrade. This is one of my favorite things to do, um, is to just take one step and upgrade, heal up uh, your health. A lot of the time, that is just uh, just the thing that you're needing in a given situation. Uh, likewise, I'm tempted here to step forward. Um, we only get an attack return. We can, we can move after attacking, but this costs two movement to move to, so we would be stuck there, even though we have Blitz. Um, which is not great, unless it's, does this road, does it have a road? May be able to move to this tile, because it has a road. Um, if the, if this tile had a road, but it does not. Man. That's unfortunate. Well, in that case, I think we would have to wait. So let's swap these two out. Get a little bit more health on the front line without attacking. And we want to play very safe, very cautious. Um, we can get a little bit of damage down here. We might as well, um, so that uh, perhaps this immortal can finish him off. Let's just shoot from here. Definitely punching above the weight class there. That is fantastic that that happened. Um, we want to fortify in the city, get healed up. Um, and, you know, I'm just going to send this settler there. I wanted to put a city there anyway. That's probably where they wanted to put their city, now that I think about it. Um, let's see. So then, um, what do we build here in Nidoros? Uh, we have the option of slotting in a... In, uh, the option of slotting in one of these things somewhere. A district. But, oh right, I never cleared, I didn't do this. Um, so let's do that. We'll hold off on the district for one turn. And just take that tile up. And be, let's see, how are we doing on housing? Um, so I want Nidoros to be huge. This is one of the wider cities that I have access to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get a granary here. Um, and probably an arena in a market. We'll go ahead and get these secondary buildings too after that. And then I'll start up the uh, the theater square, but I'm gonna go ahead and lock in that theater square's cost next turn just to keep that price low. Uh, we don't want to have that cost go up for no reason. Um, you'll notice in general, the way that I do my envoys is I spread them around, especially early on, having a bunch of envoys is really just gonna give you diplomatic favor if you put them all in one thing, but um, because you don't have the districts and the secondary buildings uh, needed to really leverage them. You can see plus three envoys only helps you if you have universities and a consulate. Um, so this is not really that good. Uh, whereas just one envoy here and, and in any other science st uh, places that you have might give you much, much more uh, than the potentially zero that two extra envoys would give here. So always spread your envoys around early on if you don't need to have suzerainty of a particular city-state, you just get 
huge bonuses in contrast to how things usually are. Um, so this is bad. Um, there's another man at arms. I don't like that. Uh, and we don't have any really high health units right now. So I'm going to just fortify here. I expect this, this unit to be brought low, but we can retreat. So it should be fine, especially with the fortify protecting the health of this unit. I think we'll be okay. We're gonna go. Ahead, we're gonna move over here to bring this, uh, bring this vampire a little closer to the combat. I'm gonna keep exploring the Byzantine Empire. I find it fascinating that they are losing to. Oh my! Um, I find it fascinating that they are losing to the uh, the Greeks. I thought that the Greeks would be rather weak, given that they're so far behind. But their hoplites clearly are doing work. I think at this time. Let's clear off some of these notifications. We've got some foreign cities. So that's these three here are all rebelling. And um, one of them is going my way in 10 turns. That's wonderful. So I guess I wonder if I'll get um, Anshon and Corinth as well. That would be really quite good. So hard to say. Uh, it is interesting that Greece would release Anshon like that, um, given that they will rebel. Usually higher uh, difficulty AIs can predict things like that. So, um, let's see. Lost the Great Lighthouse. Um, oh, that was the city. Right. This was why they went to war against Basil. I forgot that Basil also had a military emergency. Interesting. Well, I'm winning mine. Uh, tech boost. Right, we can get a trader. Let's buy a trader. That seems like definitely worth the gold. We can't buy one here. Oh, because apparently I have a trader waiting to be assigned somewhere. It says two out of three. That's strange. Oh, I'm making it here. Well, that's good then. We'll do that. Oh, um, I do not want do that. I'm really glad I didn't sell him iron. I think is Laura is really struggling for iron, struggling for horses. They're getting their walls up, which is unfortunate, but to be expected, it's good that they're having to build these walls, though. That's why their armies are being depleted so rapidly, as they realized, oh crap, we're losing. We need to get walls up everywhere. And the thing is, um, even though they're probably going to build straight towards these um, uh, medieval walls, it won't matter because we're going to unlock siege towers right about the same time. And I uh, just pop a couple of those out. Easily clean up Toronto, probably Halifax um, too. We might even be able to, if we can get Toronto, Halifax, and Vancouver at the same time, then I think we would have enough loyalty to hold down Ottawa. So it's tough to say because there are some bigger cities nearby. It's always difficult to predict exactly how much loyalty you need to uh, hold a location. Let's see, can we do this? Okay, so this will kill off that archer. That is great news. Um, we definitely needed that archer to die. They've done way too much damage for my liking. Um, and at this point, I mean, we crushed Canada. Canada is toast. Uh, I don't really see how Canada can make it another era, honestly. I, when does this end? Yeah, Canada might be out of the game within 60 turns. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that's a bit ambitious. Canada's out of the game. I think they've lost. Uh, I may eat my words. I may they, they could push me back. This is a lot of cities. I might not be able to conquer them. Could have to just burn them to the ground. I'm not sure. But I think, at the very least, Canada has invested so much energy into this and not stopped my infrastructure here that uh, I have, at the very least, caught up to them. And since I am better at thinking, given that I am capable of thinking, 
That is nearly a sure win. Mm, what do we put here? What do we put here? Um, let's go for the complex. And we're going to hold off on uh, that granary for a while. We don't actually need it. We've got too much housing here. Um, we do want the aqueduct will be very huge here. So we don't need a granary there. We do well, we have one there. We want an aqueduct here, actually. Interesting. Well, let's get that locked in. I didn't realize this until just now that this city did not have access to fresh water or water of any kind. Um, so Kumasi is going to be booming uh, once that comes up. Oh, and you can see we can actually get a turn in on this encampment as well. And I care about the encampment and the aqueduct much more than I do about the faith production at this time. So we're going to delay that a little bit. I'm going to scooch this guy over to a slightly safer spot and upgrade. That way we have another level four man-at-arms. Um, you can see here Canada is getting a little bit desperate. They're bringing forward uh, very weak units. Um, and I really don't want to uh, try to apply pressure. I want to fortify everything as much as I can um, and just try to keep things as high health as possible. <clears throat> see so I can move here this might look risky but we do have zone of control here so uh, this catapult is actually perfectly safe where it is okay well we're gonna fortify this scout just let it heal it might make him mad but that's okay um, do we have this tile on Elicent? We don't. Aha. Uh -huh. Very important to catch this kind of thing. I think I even mentioned earlier how easy it is to make that kind of mistake uh, and wind up putting the food on the wrong city. So let's quickly clear that. You can see Elson jumps up uh, to five population, and we can switch that back over for Nidoros. So now it's very simple to just drop down this theater square. And you'll notice it's only a th plus three right now. That is not a bug or something. It is just that, as it stands, until we get a couple more things put into place, it is only a plus three. It will eventually uh, be a plus six. Uh, let's see. Plus, was it plus five? I don't recall, actually. Um, it's still, it's a, maybe a little soon, but I'm going to go ahead and start moving these spearmen up if only to just hold the position of the man-at-arms, that will be uh, taking some steps forward in the near future, I think, once they finish healing up and the Canadian forces stop hurling themselves at me. <clears throat> um, so only one casualty, and it was an accident. It was a, uh, a ram, one of these siege weapons. Um, so it is worth noting that you have to be very patient to do this kind of attrition war. You do, I don't think these units ever attacked into this area. I was able to every turn, though. Um, so it's always better to err on patience, err on the side of caution, especially in a game like this, which is uh, standard extended, playing with a couple of gameplay pacing enhancements, where it's a much slowed down version of the game. Um, it's always better to just take it easy. So we've got, oops, we've got a big volcano eruption there next to Sparta, which did that do damage? Did not do damage and uh, gained a bunch of fertility. So that's great. Wonderful for Sparta. Um, I'm tempted to buy these tiles near Cardiff, but I actually don't think I'm going to because I will conquer Cardiff at some point. Um, and I think that would be better than buying those. Let's kill off this warrior just to get rid of that flanking bonus. Makes no It would not be good to leave that there. Um, and we can step here. Um, and stay fortified. Uh, I worry that this unit will die. 
I'm a bit nervous about that. Um, but, well, no, we've got zone of control here, so they shouldn't be able to, this, this one shouldn't be able to attack here. I think. Unless I have mid misunderstood something. And then we can set here, ready to attack that. move into this position and upgrade. Again, we don't really want the immortals around, we're just using them as spearmen, or as uh, archers, because we kind of have to. Uh, I'm going to step here, finally get these vampires moving in to the battle. Um, there's a vampire down here as well that is almost healed, died right away at the beginning, um, <clears throat> but that was for the best. They soaked up and dealt out a lot of damage at the beginning of the war. So having the second vampire here finally making it all the way across the continent, uh, they weren't quite so close by as the first one. That is great, especially since the uh, first one is finally almost healed. So that's very, very good. Um, now here, Grassland Hills. Let's grab these truffles. I think that's what we want to do there. Uh, these tiles have already been cleared off, and I believe, yeah, this is here to stay. So let's drop a lumber mill there. Let's go ahead and drop a lumber mill um, there as well. That would be good. Get rid of those tacks. And let's just stand here and heal up also. Good, that trading route is finally getting over to Thessalonica. And you can see uh, Victoria is eight turns away. So just a few more turns now, and we will get Victoria for free. This is huge. That might even cause Toronto to flip. Um, I'm not really sure just what exactly is going to happen. Oh, that's so painful. Oh, I was so afraid that was going to happen. I, didn't, I thought that they had enough health. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that that did enough damage, but that's okay. That's okay, it's our first major loss. Uh, you can see Canada now wants peace. I'm going to take peace with Coupe. Um, that seems absolutely brill to take peace with Coupe. I am not going to take peace with Canada. I'm going to make Canada pay for the... Uh, wow, another eruption here. Um, well, I guess <laughs> we'll get to see it anyway. Uh, but I am going to make Canada pay for the damage they have caused to my people. Um, is it going to erupt? Well, that's... An awfully boring eruption. Hmm. <coughs> so I've never seen it not erupt. Weird. Um, but we got nine tiles gaining fertility, um, which doesn't seem right. It seems like... Oh, uh, that's right. We had two turns in a row of eruption. Uh, oh, something died. I wonder what died. But regardless, we got uh, more production yields. You can see the yields around the city are crazy now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, Sparta is destined for greatness. Destined for greatness. Uh, let's see. Oh, yay. Um, so here we can get some faith from our preserve, which is very good by slotting in this grove. This is a plus three preserve, so that'll be a... Oh, it, should, it will eventually be a plus three preserve, so... Um, yeah, I thought that was plus three. It's only plus one. Uh, well, let's, a moment of, of silence for our, um, fallen, fallen brother here.
Let's see. So, yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I am, in fact, turning aggressive. Um, <clears throat> I think we've got Canada totally knocked out. They're not going to be able to do anything in the future. Um, and if we can conquer their territory, I think that's as much as a game win for us. So I am going to, um, as soon as this infrastructure is done building, switch into a heavy military production mode and just try to brute force Canada out of the game. Um, you can see we are the biggest empire in the world right now. Um, and against eight cities with 13, you know, you can just make more stuff. Um, I don't want to overcommit to this. You know, it's very important that uh, you do not. I'm also going to buy a granary here. Um, it's going to take a long time to build otherwise, and uh, we'll definitely get our city kick-started off. You can see we're getting plus six food now. <clears throat> also note that uh, with this city, I'm going to need access to um, some of these tiles. I think... Oh, actually, no, um, it would be the other way. So once again, this is a situation where we want to make sure to label uh, what is building what. So, oh, I'm sad. Oh, chat, did I make this this turn? I did make this city this turn. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually... I can't... I need to make this campus first. Um, I need to make this campus first. I'm going to reload the turn. I'm going to reload, reload the turn. I hate that. Um, but I made a mistake with uh, a decision here. And it wasn't a combat mistake. You know, I'm not going to reload to save units or stuff like that, but <clears throat> I should not have built this city yet. I should have sent that city over here. Um, this kind of thing where I don't fulfill a plan that I already planned. Uh, I don't mind reloading. No, we're human. We make mistakes. Sometimes we click the wrong thing. Sometimes we forget the thing we planned to do. And in a game of civilization, that can just be devastating. So, uh, honestly, I recommend you just keep some autosaves. You'll notice I keep 10 autosaves at the ready. So if I need to back up a little bit, say I realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to start, you know, Mausoleum and it's crucial to my build. You know, maybe you're playing Gaul. Um, it's okay to go back a few turns and change your game plan a little bit to fit what your original game plan was.